This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down every lane. We have the next batch of uh, the games that I bought from uh, TJ. It's a gentleman that I met recently. He had a lot of games, and uh, I bought his whole lot, his whole childhood. This is his collection that he had since his childhood. And so he had quite a bit of uh, NES collection right here. This is insane. Let's go take a look at what we have here. Let's see if we can just walk a little. Let's see. Whew, I'm a bit tired. All these cartridges have been cleaned. The contacts have been cleaned with rubbing alcohol. The outsides have been cleaned. Apparently these have been sitting inside the basement over at his place for quite a long time. We got Darkwing Duck. Can't quite make out all these cartridges, but I'm gonna let you guys take a look at what we have here. I'm actually too tired to read these things. Like Toki. Yeah, there's probably a few games I already have. Interestingly enough, I think 70% of the games in every lot so far are games that I don't own, so it's pretty cool. To be honest, I don't know exactly which one. I know that game right there. I had the first one. I believe that's the second one right there. Black Erasers, and we got a Paperboy 2. ba 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 Star Tropics. Uh, Castlevania 3. Uh, there's nothing with the on the so far here. Snake Rattle on Roll, we got the uh, American Gladiators. Snow Brothers, which I think that one for online pricing is like way overpriced. Uh, Kirby Adventure, Paddle Toads, uh, Robinus Boy. Uh, Simpsons game right there. See, I probably mumble in how freaking exhausted I am. Adventures Island 2. We got this three Stooges, and we got the Tension Cartridge right there, Pac Man. City Connection. Never actually played that before. Rad Racer. Rocky and Bowenko. We got the uh, Snakes Revenge, Mar uh, Marble Madness. That's one of my favorite NES games right there. Snoopy. Blaster Master. And we got one of these. Uh, Really obscure cartridges, I think it's, what's that, America or something like that? Who makes that? I'm going to have to look at that afterwards. You know, Little Mermaid, it's a Capcom game. Tom and Jerry, Sesame Street, Smash TV, and you can tell this is probably when he was uh, in his childhood, because why else would he have that game? That probably, he probably had that game since he was little. The Simpsons, uh, I do have a copy of that. That's actually in better condition than the one I have. Eight Eyes, MC Kids, is that crazy McDonald game. We've got DuckTales, Super C. What is that game right What is that? Adventures in the Lost Magic Kingdom, that is. Magic Kingdom. Uh, Base Wars. Dash Galaxy, Mike Tyson Punch Out, Track and Field, Adam's Family, uh, Friday the 13th, Psych Bike, Super Mario 3, Indiana Jones, Detention, copy of that, Zelda, Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combination right there, the Ninja Turtles game, Tetris, and we got Ninja Turtles Part 2. Uh, Dr. Mario and Pearl Amp. Star Tropics for the NES. Now, the main thing that we're going to be taking a look at is if it has, still has saved files. This is almost 30 years old. And uh, you can see on the back right here, it says Caution. The game pack contains batteries. 
Uh, it may be da uh, damaged if a uh, game pack is removed or inserted with the power on or the, uh, the power switch is turned rapidly on and off. So, I uh, did get this cartridge from a huge gaming lot recently. Never even played it, so I don't know if it actually works or not. Let's first take a look at the manual right here. Uh, Star Tropic I never played. However, I do know it's an RPG game of some sort. It has like saved features on it, of course. And check out the really cool illustrations inside the manual. Look at that. What the hell? What the hell is that? Look at this. It's a big fat man right there. This is how to start the game. You know, it gives you the basic stuff right here. Got all the basic stuff right there. It's basically how to play the game right there. You can talk by pushing A. With a little screenshot right there. Kind of looks almost like a Zelda type game. And uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, the manual switch, so right here you have wow look at that that's crazy look at that okay like similar similar items to what you see in Zelda and got like a little rat creature right there look at that it's like a snowman I honestly have no idea what this game is. I've heard of it, of course, but I never actually played it. That is a really disturbing looking creature. Oh my god, look at that thing. It has a human skull head, but it has like a, a bird's body. Oh, what the hell is that? Then of course, I'm, it seems like once you go further and further into the manual, things get like scarier and scarier. What the hell is that? Kind of like a mummy looking creature, you got another skull head. Oh my god, whoa, what the hell? Got this guy down here that has like a pirate sword. Got a ghouls and ghosts going thing going on there. We got the uh, something going on here with the uh, stars. And of course, things get really scary on the back right here because you have the compliance with the FCC regulations. If you do not go by FCC regulations, you're bound to <clears throat> have a, a lot of uh, issues with the uh, government. So that's the scariest part of the manual right there. Uh, even scarier is the 90 day limited warranty because if you play the game for three months and one day and something goes wrong, here in Shit's Creek. And what do we? What? Do, what is this? We got like a little paper here, and everything came inside this folder. I don't know what this is, but we're gonna open it up. Was this part of the game? <laughs> what is this? A little shamrock right there, and uh, sincerely, Uncle Steve is this question do not taste, eat, or otherwise consume this paper. This letter is very important, so please hold on to it until the end of the game. That is really interesting. So, this apparently came with the game. This note right here, I guess it was actually part of the manual. I'll put that back in there. So let's take a look at the, uh, the label art right here. And basically, we're just going to check to see if the save files still exist on Star Tropics. And right on the, uh, the actual label right here, you have Star Tropics, nice bright yellow letters right there. And uh, you have 
a star looking sky right there on top, a shooting star right there. You have like an island, a little like pond looking thing right there, like a body of water. You have some, like the ocean in the background. You have trees. Looks like a nice looking paradise. Look at that. It's a nice looking label. I have no idea exactly what this is, you know, what this game is about, except for it's an RPG game of some sort. And I did clean the pins recently, so the pins should be nice and clean. Of course, you got the uh, the warning label, caution label right there. The, on the end label right here, you have Star Tropic and let, let's focus right here, camera, right here. Come on, you can you can do it. Holy crap! Oh, come there we go. Start. Wow, come on, camera, stop being rude. Star Tropics and the label right there. You got the purple background color with the uh, Star Tropics yellow looking uh, text right there and the camera wants to be Let's see if we can zoom out for a second here maybe we can get a little closer right there camera right there there we go we've got the Star Tropics logo right there with the TM trademark See, this is what the cartridge looks like. The condition looks okay. So the mystery is, is there saved files on this almost 30-year-old Star Tropics cartridge? We're going to find out. We're going to insert it down into the, uh, the NES, which is right down there. In fact, we'll insert it right now, and we'll find out. Let's take a look. We're going to turn the TV on and get the controllers plugged in and all that stuff. So stay tuned, we're going to find out if there's any saved data on that cartridge. Okay, so this is Star Tropic and uh... No pushing any buttons. Yeah, I have my actually my, my wife playing the Hello. game right here. Hi, this is my, uh, my wife right here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good, good. I've got the Star Tropics uh, title screen right here. Now, you're more of a fan of RPG games. I am. I'm not a fan of RPG games at all, really. I just don't have the, uh, you know, the attention span to play them. In fact, you're just playing one of the Final Fantasy games over on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Before I interrupted you. Right. Rudely. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to be seeing if there's any saved files on this game. So, uh, we have a nice looking title screen right here. I, I love the Star Tropics logo on the top right there. Uh, yeah, push a button. Like, let's see if there's any saved files here. And there appears to be a saved... Actually, it looks like three saved files. The top one is A, 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 and A. And the second one is TJ, which I believe is the gentleman I actually bought the uh, the video game a lot from. He uh, sold a whole bunch of games to me, and that that he must have been playing this game like over 20 years ago. And then uh, the bottom one is DJ also. So how do you um, how do you like select? You might have to hit select the actual select button and start to choose the one that you want. Oh, okay, which do you want to check out? Uh, you can choose whichever one. We're gonna choose. Which one are we gonna choose? That one. TJ. TJ two. So number two, TJ. We're in his saved file, and the the cartridge held up. The cartridge is nearly thirty years old. This is freaking insane. It actually holds up. The battery still works. Like it. Open that door. It will open. I'm trying to figure out what kind of creature that is. You said that's a snail? Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe those oh, are octopus? the... octopus? Oh yeah, there is an octopus in here. Octo... No, no, that's not that one. Okay, that's that's the, uh... Octot? What a name, that's a really crazy name. An octot. But there's also a larger octopus called Octo the Huge. It's like a huge octopus. Okay, so why didn't the door open? I killed all the enemies. Oh, 
Maybe there's some certain type of way you're supposed to jump on things. I have no idea. A pattern of jumping around? Oh no, look. What is that? Oh yeah, you have to get that that thing. Oh yeah. I think that's the switch. Yeah, it's up across fast, fast, fast. That's a foot. It's right there, go in. No, but I was looking at that foot thing. Oh. Okay, so now we have the uh, coke. Oh no! Ooh. Oh, oh my God! Oh. That thing came up fast. So that's a Star Tropic. No. Now we have half the life we had before. Yeah, I'm not good at this. Spin a star. Well, you're better than what I would be. So yeah, it's, uh, my wife's doing a pretty good job playing this game. Considering this is her first time playing this game, and she's actually jumping into a save file in progress. Oh. Uh, there is actual save files. The whole point point of this video is that there's actual save files on this cartridge that are from like nearly 30 years ago. It's quite impressive that the cartridge held up that long. Yeah, the save file actually still exists. It's actually pretty cool. So that foot thing actually makes that thing appear? Yeah. I wonder if that thing's like timed. Like if you hang around long enough if that door closes. Just watch out that snake's gonna get you. Oh no, there it is again. Beat him in the face. There's another snake creature right there. Oh, okay, there's hearts right there. That's great. I'm going to figure out how to get them. That snake is like in the worst spot. So you walk right there, yeah. you can get you. Yeah, they're just waiting for me. Oh, I can't. Okay. Alright, well that was Star Tropic on the NES. It has saved files. What a cool game that was. Yeah, Marble Madness. Uh, the whole object of this game is to roll your marbles from point A to point B. Make sure you get your marbles in the right spot. And uh, you can see there, this game, when I bought this game, it came with a huge NES slot uh, from a private seller. Drove to his actual location and purchased all his stuff. And uh, apparently he had all his NES games stored in the basement for years and years decades. So there is probably a little bit of uh, discoloration on the actual plastic of the cartridge, but the games work fine. I cleaned them and restored them as much as possible. You see the end label. Looks uh, pretty good. There's no peels or anything like that. The, uh, the actual label on the front looks a little weathered. You can see there's probably a little bit of uh, bumps on it and stuff like that. But again, it was stored in the basement for like quite a long time. So yeah, that's the uh, the label art right there. You got like four, or actually three marbles, balls. You got a uh, blue ball, a black ball, and a red ball. Having a collision course. Who is the most dominant ball? We're gonna find out once we play Marble Madness. And uh, here we got the manual. The Marble Madness instruction manual and pretty much uh, tells you exactly uh, don't let your balls hit each other like that. And safety tips, they give you safety tips about the uh, the balls, the marbles. And it tells you exactly how to play the uh, the game in 45 degree angle right there. So if you want to hold your controller like that, that's exactly how you would play it. So if you have your controller, you would hold it like that. I actually have a controller right here, so I can show you guys. You would play it like that, as mentioned in the uh, the manual. It's a little different, and uh, that's something that I actually recorded the footage of the game already, so I had no idea there was a, a turbo charge. That's interesting. I should have read this first. So you can turbo charge your uh, your marble by pushing the A button. I thought the A and B button didn't do anything at all. 
It's been years since I played this game. Let's see enemies and traps, shortcuts, bonus seconds, all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. And of course, there is a uh, compliance with FCC regulations for uh, the marbles or the balls, whatever, whatever you want to call them. And I believe that this game came out in 1988. And this is a Milton Bradley game. I mean, look at that. Pretty standard NES manual, nothing fancy. So let's head over to the NES and let's play some Marble Madness. All right, let's get that cartridge inside the NES Entertainment System, and now you're gonna be playing with power in a second. Let's get that bad boy in there. Oh yeah, and I got the uh, red light win, so there is gonna be no freezing up or nothing crazy happening. Let's uh, get the power on and let's play Marble Madness. Here we are playing the Nintendo Entertainment System, and we're playing Marble Madness. Good old classic game right here. Let's uh, let's play this. Now this game right here. Is there any audio here? Let's see. I used to have the. Uh... Actually, no. I'm thinking about Arkanoid. Arkanoid had the little controller with the little dial on it, kind of like. One of those Atari paddle, paddle controllers. I had like a little wheel you had to turn. So Arkanoid is... Let's see if we can... Okay, so this is Marble Madness. So by Marble Madness, you roll a ball. As you can see there, just a little blue ball. And you have to roll it around the platform here and try to get to the, uh, the goal without falling off the platform. Let's see if we know. Oh, 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 that was close. Look at that. You can hear the, uh, the audio. The awesome music right there. Let's see if we can turn that audio down a little bit on the computer. This always happens on like every other episode of Memory Lane. Alright, so we're on the second level. Let's see if we can get this ball in its place. There's a huge. Black ball right there trying to stop. Oh, that, there's a ball conflict going on right here. Oh my god. The battle of the balls. Oh my. Oh! Alright. We have a ball battle part two right here. Let's see if we can get down here without dying. Alright, so we have to go down here. And, and we got these uh, like noodle looking. And you know what? That is really, really good animation for NES standards. Look at that. So this game is isometric. But those uh, enemies right there, they, they, they look like noodles or something. I don't know what the hell they are. But they are literally like hopping around, flipping around on the, on the actual uh, map right there. And it looks, for NES standards, it looks pretty good. Alright, let's go down here. And you see all the gears turning underneath the platform. I always loved this game on the NES. Like, the detail on it was really good. Oh! I got like tension. Oh my god, what the hell? It's a very, very uh, disobedient ball. Let's see if we can make it all the way to the end here. Oh, let's go, let's go. Oh, the time limit ran out. You can see right there, as soon as the time limit runs out, you get the game over. Now, I don't know if I have Arkanoid. But as mentioned before, Arkanoid came with the controller that had the wheel on it. Uh, if I That controller costs a lot of money now. Yeah, I don't have that game. I'm gonna have to track that game down. All right, let's uh, let's let's play this again. Marble Madness and uh, control types: 90 degrees or 45 degrees. I don't know what the hell the difference is, but let's uh, try it out here. I actually do have a manual to this game, by the way. So, as you saw in the beginning of the video, there is a manual that came with the cartridge. And let's see if we can make it down to... Oh, oh, oh. The controls definitely feel a little different. Come on, launch me over there, you son of a bitch. Alright, let's go back the other direction. I want to go that way, so... Look, 
I can actually make it over here. Let me see if I can do it. I don't think there's a limit to how many times you die either, as long as the time doesn't run out. Oh, I, I actually made it over here, okay. So let's go over this way. What the hell? I mean, this is playing tricks on my eyeballs right here. Okay, so now we can't go that way, I guess. <laughs> And this is why the time limit is important, because you can get stuck in certain areas. And I don't know for sure how we're going to get ourselves out of this one. You can't roll up. The ball is like too heavy to go up that, that uh, hill. There's a bit of a hill right here. And uh, you try to get your ball up there and the ball is like not going anywhere. Oh my god. Okay, so, even though you're using the game genie, you can definitely get stuck. So you get a roll and start, and we get stuck midway. And uh, that is that. So, I don't, let me see here. Okay, we got the pause screen. There's no way of restarting unless you actually manually restart the game. So that, that is Marble Madness on the uh, NES. Now, the second portion of the video we did use the Game Genie, it did work. Uh, but apparently, there is certain areas you can get stuck in, which I did not realize until now. Look at that. And you cannot roll up any further. Oh my god. Almost made it. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, and if you love Marble Madness, uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below, and let me know if you want to see more. That's a Roadrunner. For the NES, it's a Tenjin cartridge, as you can see here. So, uh, just in case you don't know, Tenjin is Atari, and uh, these black, unlicensed cartridges are uh, basically bootleg games for the NES. Really, really good bootleg games. And uh, Roadrunner originally released in the arcade in 1985, and this particular copy released in 1989 by Atari for the NES, or Tenjin. And check out the uh, the label art. The label art is pretty cool. You got the uh, Wally e. Coyote and the uh, Roadrunner right there. It's like a comic style thing going on there. You see the beep beep. Got the Roadrunner logo. Hey, it looks pretty awesome. Check that out. And on the back of the cartridge, you have the uh, Tengen Seal of Quality because, of course, uh, this particular game, just like all Tengen games, do not have Nintendo Seal of Quality. They have their own. So attention pretty much guarantees the quality of this game, and uh, that pisses Nintendo off quite a bit. And there's uh, quite a few little caution notices right here. It says, do not store a cartridge in very hot or cold places. Never hit or drop or take apart. There's a whole list of things going on here. Patent, patent pending, made in USA, manufactured by Tenjin. Now, uh, for some reason on this particular cartridge, if you look inside, there appears to be like some weird red marker at the very edge of the cartridge, uh, the actual cartridge itself, which I don't know what that is, but that's kind of strange. I've never seen a Nintendo cartridge like that before. Now, the end label is, uh, you know, your typical uh, tension cartridge. There's not really much to see for an end label here. Uh, the, the Roadrunner portion of the end label, if you can call that an end label, it's a little worn out, but for the most part, this cartridge is in, is in pretty damn good shape. So let's uh, uh, struggle with the NES here, as I kind of see right here, the NES doesn't want to cooperate with me. Definitely does not approve tension cartridges, as you can see there. And let's pop in the game, and let's play Roadrunner! So right away when we uh, turned the game on right here, it took a little while to get it working, we have uh, some tension notification over here. And then we have the Roadrunner title screen. It actually looks pretty cool. You know, Wile E. Coyote and the actual Roadrunner itself. It's probably one of the best uh, title screens I've seen on the NES. It has a lot of uh, detail. Oh, look at that. You have the uh, Roadrunner right there. And this is a sample of the gameplay. You hear it right there in the background. We have Wile E. Coyote chasing the Roadrunner. This is a basic arcade game. This came out originally in 85. Let's check it out. 
We have to run from the uh, coyote. See if we can get away from him. We have to. Oh my god. It's gonna get me. Oh, oh no. What the hell is that? <laughs> so yeah, dude, this. Originally, it was an arcade game. You have to eat all the seeds right here. Try to get away from him. Get away from me. So, the whole idea of this is trying to make it to the end of the stage here. To run in circles a little bit to get away from the coyote. I never actually played this game before. I played it briefly before I recorded this. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I'm almost at the end of the stage, too. Oh no, I got hit by the Acme vehicle. It's pretty funny. Uh, for NES standards, the, uh, the animation and the graphics are actually pretty nice. They actually look pretty good. So, uh, yeah, Atari Tension, they did a pretty good job at yeah, uh, porting this game to the NES. It's considered bootlegged, unfortunately. Oh, no! And it looks like the, uh, the NES froze. <laughs> That's usually what happens when you have uh, an old front loader. And it doesn't like tension cartridges, so we gotta see if we can pull this out a little bit. It doesn't want to come out either. Jesus. <laughs> Back in there, just one down. This NES is a little beat up. Kind of sucks. You get halfway through a game, and all of a sudden your NES freezes on you. That See this. I'm not the only person that's happened to. It's kind of pisses people off, but see if you're an old retro gamer, I'm pretty sure that's happened to you before. <laughs> so let's give this a try one more time before this old NES decides to uh, give out on us. I actually might need a new set of pins. So I haven't replaced the pins on this thing in a long. Oh my god, he got hit by a truck. Go, 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 what the hell are you doing? Oh, what the hell? I'm using the dog bone controller also from the second model NES. Oh, shit. Well, that didn't work out. So let's see if we can get to the end of the level before the NES uh, gives out. No! Oh my god. And, uh, the uh, video signal is through AV cables. So it definitely looks... Heck of a lot better than the RF signal from the WrestleMania game I recorded. Go, 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 go. Let's see if we can get around here. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Get away from me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, did I die? Yeah, I made it to the second level. Alright, so we made it to the, the end of this level right here, this arcade style, so let's see if we can... He's riding a rocket of some sort. Oh my god. Holy crap. Wow, that was crazy. No! No! <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Oh my god. He gets, like, stuck. I guess if he doesn't eat, like, enough uh, seeds, you die. That's all, folks. Just like in the old uh, cartoons. Let's give it a try one more time. We have the little uh, Roadrunner guy over here, and the... it's a classic cartoon. Very, very violent cartoon, but it's definitely a classic. A lot of the old cartoons were quite violent, but it was acceptable back then. You probably never see anything like that nowadays. It was very, very awesome. Let's see if we can uh, make it to the end of the level without dying. Oh, oh what the hell? We get the seed meter up there on top. I'm guessing if you don't eat enough seeds, you die. It's kind of similar to, uh, what was it? Uh, Back to the Future. If you don't collect enough of whatever the hell it is, time, 
You run out of time and then you die because your little guys on the bottom of the screen start fading out. Get away from me! Oh, he's gonna... Is he gonna die? No way. Get up! Oh! He's almost at the end of the level. Oh! If you push the, uh, the A button, you can actually escape. Hey, I made it to the end. Let's try it out. Alright, let's see if we can run through this level with no problem here. Have to wait till he gets around to the other side here. Oh no! <laughs> what the hell is that? What the hell? Alright. Okay, wait till he gets around here and then get the seeds. Oh my god! What the hell? Did he like change his path or something? Like I. Alright, let's wait. Holy crap. Wow, he's flying in different areas. Oh my god, this is hard. Haha, -ha, he blew up. That's pretty funny. Go, go, go! Holy cr oh my god, no, don't get stuck! Oh man. So yeah, that's uh, Roadrunner on the NES. It's actually, uh, I believe it's on the Atari 7800 also. I'm not sure which one's better. Quite often the uh, 7800 can give the NES a run for its money. Uh, it's definitely an arcade game also that came out in 85. Um, title screen's awesome. The game is a pretty fun arcade style game for the NES. It's not approved by Nintendo. It's a tension cartridge. It's an interesting game. I, I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And if you like classic cartoons like I do, uh, what is your favorite classic cartoon? Go ahead and list it down below. I'm going to have to say mine is probably uh, Tom and Jerry. Or even this one right here, The Roadrunner. Definitely uh, two awesome classic cartoons with tons of action. Alright, here we are playing TNC. Surf Designs, Wood and Water Rage for the NES. Now this game was uh, developed by Atlas and was released back in 1988. So uh, let's find out if it's good or bad. And we're using a real, real hardware here. And uh, let's play this game. And I remember playing this back in the day. I might be a little biased during this review because I have a guilty pleasure of enjoying playing this game while some people are tortured by it. So in this uh, game, you can choose two different players here. There's a uh, player on the uh, left side that appears to be a very ugly looking creature. <laughs> I don't know what to call him, but we'll look at Look at this. You'll see in a second. What the hell is wrong with his face? I mean, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something. He has a very, very nasty facial expression or he's wearing a mask. Something's going on there. No, I went down the damn hole. What the hell? Let's go around that hole. Got a, a remote control car right there that almost screwed us over. What the hell is that thing? And you have to button my Oh, what? That almost looks like a power-up. So I figured that if I run into it, it would help me out, but that didn't help. Didn't help at all. Alright, so let's get across here. Got some points. Yeah! So far we're doing good. See if we can make it to the end. And uh, basically, this game you have to button mash the uh, B button and A's jump. You can hold back and A to jump, actually. I call him a creature. He looks like a creature. He looks like he's wearing some sort of mask of something. I Very, very ugly looking uh, character model. And oh! That probably fixed his face a little bit right there by. Oh, again! That looks like it hurt. So let's uh, take a look at the other uh, border that we have here. This guy looks a little bit more slick. A little bit. He's wearing sunglasses. He looks, looks a little bit too happy. Look at him. 
That guy right there. He looks like your uh, typical 1980s slick looking guy right there. Got the uh, overuse of hair gel. And uh, let's see how he does. And he's skating. Oh, 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 he went down the hole. <laughs> oh, my God. And he got back up and he's smiling once again. This guy's like the happiest guy in the world. And just look at that. Oh, even when he dies, he's smiling. And this guy, you can't keep a smile off this guy's face. He is a happy, happy man. <laughs> the graphics look pretty good. I mean, you got some random things that just fly around the screen that try to, like, completely mess you up. Like, whatever the hell that thing is, I really don't know what that was. It looked like some ball or something like that. And, uh, it looks like we're just getting to the end of the map right there, and we just won. This guy's happier than a pig in shit. And, uh, you may be wondering, what the hell is the surf portion of this game? Well, let's, uh, find out. So, as you can see here, there is a big wave encounter. Uh, let's, uh, find out what that is. Now, uh, you get two different characters right here. You have, like, a cat-looking character, and you have, like, a, uh, gorilla. So, let's, uh, pick the cat. We'll choose that cat first. And see exactly how cats play in the water. And the last time I checked, cats do not like water, and... And, oh, 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 what the hell is that? And what is that bird? This stupid seagull completely knocked me off the board. I just don't get it. So, yeah, I... I Oh, oh! I've owned this game back in the day. And I can tell you right now, this game is probably like the hardest portion of the game, and I never could understand it. Okay, it pisses me off. And, okay. I don't know what the hell I just did there, but somehow I won. Oh, I ran into that fat ass that was just full Oh, wait, he came back. What the hell was that? Alright, so let's uh, see if we can do some tricks. That was not my intended trick right there, but... Oh, no! That stupid bird. Get oh, 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 over there. I don't know how to play this portion of the game, to be honest. This portion of the game sucks. Now, let's see if the gorilla has better luck. And I went straight down into the water. That stupid bird is right there. Oh, oh no, no, get up, get up. Oh. There's an airplane up there. Oh no! Oh no, what the? <laughs> this portion of the game sucks. I mean, it really does. So, just in case you're wondering, also, you have wood and water rage. So, you have to play both skateboarding and you have to play the surfing also. So, let's try this out. Come on! Faster. Oh, that didn't go as well as I uh, wanted it to. So, yeah, back in the day, I owned this game and I had a lot of fun playing it. And the results are the same as they are now. It's not that good, but it's fun. I'm not going to say that it's a bad game. But this game was probably more designed to be a rental back in the day. And it's two players. So we can both frustrate the shit out of each other playing this game and have fun. I personally love the game. That's my biased opinion. Uh, but to be fair, the game is simply an okay game. It's not bad at all. And it's made by LGN. So hey, a lot of people hate LGN games. I personally love this game. I think it's not bad at all. Here we are playing TNC Surf Design Thrillist Safari. And we have a, what the hell is that? <laughs> This I've never played before, but I actually have a physical copy of this game. And it looks like there's a bit of a storyline to it. Now, the first one had some waterboarding and skating. Or skateboarding, that is. Now, this one has a bit of a Donkey Kong-looking creature. Now, this game was developed by Sculpture Software and released in 1992. And uh, we have a lady that just got kidnapped off the beach. What the hell is that? And there's a Thriller Gorilla. He's getting pissed off. Got his girlfriend stolen right there. Alright, so we got the yeah, title screen right here, so let's play this game and try to figure it out. I mean, if it's anything like the first game, the first game is actually pretty fun. Alright, so here we are. Brand new to this. I've never played this before. Holy crap. Holy crap. What the hell's going on here? Man, when you crash on this game, you crash. Oh, what the hell is that? Did he, like, turn to a pile of ashes? 
All right. Oh, oh my God! What the hell is going on here? All right. So is there a way of like slowing down, like just a little bit here? Okay. Wow, that did not work. Okay. So let's uh, speed it up a little bit here. See if we can get around here. Son of a bitch! Wow, this game is, uh... It's fun, but man, they put a lot of obstacles in your way. I mean, it's kind of, like, unfair. Game over, dude, and you have a uh, Thriller Gorilla with angel wings. He's pretty much, he's dead. I'm wondering if there's any Game Genie codes for this game. Oh, come on, that's that's ridiculous. What, what, what is this big, huge chunks of shit? Alright, so let's uh, make it to the end of this level right here, or at least try. So there's uh, so many things you have to jump over, but you have to be very cautious. Alright, so far we're doing okay. Let's see if we can do it here. Oh! Damn it. It is fun. I'll give it that. So the uh, the animations and the graphics in this game are actually pretty good. Alright, so let's see if we can make it around these mountains of whatever that is. Shit. Tripped over that bikish. Oh, why did I do that? Damn. Alright, let's make it to... Uh, the end of the level and you got like eyeballs. The uh, the background animations are distracting me. I, it's quite interesting to see uh, all the detail on this game. It's a good looking game. See the lush graphics on this game actually look pretty good. I personally think the graphics look probably some of the best looking graphics on the NES. Oh, what the hell was that? So you can actually jump back and forth too, I didn't know that. Like, not only can you jump straight forward, but you can jump like, look at, I'm doing pretty good right now. All right. So let's see if we can make it to the end here. Ho, 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 I did it. All right. So apparently we have a little mini game here. And I really don't know what the hell, I, mean, I guess I'll pick that. All right, I got something right there. Um, at least I got one little whatever the hell that was. It looked like a little rabbit shit. Oh, there's a frog. Holy crap! There's a lot of obstacles in the way. Oh, oh no, 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 no! We're not going that direction. What is that? Is that a, is that a Komodo dragon? Or is that like a dinosaur? Wow, so you have to like skate in multiple directions. That is complex. Holy crap, this game is nuts. Look at this. My final opinion on TNC Surf Design Thrill Safari Park was well, the second TNC game. It's fun. There's a tremendous amount of obstacles in the way, so this game was definitely designed to be more of like a rental. Rather than uh, you buy it, take it home, permanently yours. So uh, LGN, Sculpture Software, their goal was to have you go out and rent this game multiple times. It's, the graphics are nice. Uh, I don't think it's as quite fun as the first one. I think the game is okay. It's not bad. It's not the greatest, but I'm not going to say it's bad though. The game is definitely uh, way too many obstacles in the way on the first level and second level. is like really, really crazy. So that's as far as I got. I think the game is okay. I'm going to keep it at that. What do you guys think? Comment down below and let me know what you think of TNC 2. Thrill of Gorilla or Thrill of Safari or whatever the hell you want to call it. So yeah, let me know what you think. <laughs> We're going to be playing some Tag Team Wrestling for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Developed by SAS Sakata. Published by Data East. Released in 1986. Ain't nothing like playing some Tag Team Pro Wrestling right here. Now this game right here in particular, I remember owning this game back in the day and man was this game hard. Now, people don't probably realize how hard this game is, but when you play it, the uh, the enemy or your the uh, the opponent that you're going up against, when he gets pissed off, he starts blinking red, and then all of a sudden he starts beating the crap out of you, which you'll see in a second. And now, right away on the uh, 
the, the box art, the label art here, you have some generic wrestlers. And I believe this might have been one of the first wrestling games on the, uh, the NES. Uh, the pins probably look clean. There's a little bit of debris right there that we have to blow out. And uh, pretty generic. Uh, that, that almost kind of resembles like a Von Erich type looking wrestler. Uh, these look like your typical like luchador looking wrestlers right here. So it's a mixture between uh, some Mexican wrestling and some good old fashioned Texas wrestling right there. Now check that out. We got some uh, wrestling happening right there in the center of the ring. We got the champions right here. Definitely look like, uh, resemble the Von Erichs kind of. And, uh, yes. Right here it says, licensed by Nintendo for play on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. And, uh, they want to remind you that this was an arcade hit. It came straight from the arcades, ported to the NES. So let's uh, head over to the NES and let's enjoy this classic arcade port of Tag Team Wrestling for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's see how good it is. Alright, time to play some Nintendo Entertainment System. Good old fashioned tag team wrestling. One of the first uh, NES wrestling games here. And uh, maybe it doesn't want to play. Let's uh, see what we have going on here. <laughs> Gotta give it a good old fashioned blow. It should work fine, so let's put it back in there and try it out. There we go. That works every time. How about that? Tag Team Wrestling. Uh, this game is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the hardest wrestling games of all time. And here we go. Right away, we're throwing this straight into the match. And he's pissed off already. As I mentioned, he turns red when he gets mad. I didn't even touch him. It's like when you taunt him, you get super pissed off. Oh my god, there he is. Oh, he's gonna beat the shit out of me. Oh no. Oh, that flying headbutt. Yeah, we got my health. You son of a bitch. Oh, oh, he's beating the shit out of me. Drop kick. Oh, right, we're outside the ring already. Jesus. And the chance. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, I, was, I was trying to win my count out. I might get lucky. And what, oh, yeah. I don't know what that was. I'm going to try to pin him. Oh, that's unfortunate. And Whoa, what we got going on here? We got some interference. Let me. Oh, he's getting mad because I'm trying to go to my partner. And the uh, sound effects, you can hear the, the pain. Got to kick out. Yeah! So I kind of forgot how to play this game, but there, there is a, it's some sort of primitive move set, and he choked me and threw me out. Alright, let me see if I can count. I, I forgot if, if this is a 10 count or a 20 count. Okay, it's definitely a 20 count, as you can see there. And he's trying to count me out, that son of a bitch. Oh! Oh, he made it just into the ring. Son of a... Okay, I think my partner's sound there, maybe. I don't know. No, no! He kicked my ass already. I can hear the sound pretty loud on my computer. You can see right there, winner is... <laughs> Strong Bads. So, much like Pro Wrestling on the NES, where it says, Winner is you, this one has the same exact screen for the most part. Now, let's, uh, try to figure out who my partner is here. Oh, oh there we go. That's my, oh, he's killing me. Take my partner in. 
And remember, when they get red, the, the enemy, that means he's like super mad and he's gonna beat the shit out of you. Here we're this game had a had a decent amount of detail back then. It had the camera guy on the bottom, had a lot of fans moving around. Look at that. It actually looks pretty good. It's not that bad of a wrestling game, but it was pretty hard. And uh, when you win the tournament, you actually get a, like a trophy, and you continue playing the tournament, and your trophies get bigger and bigger. Oh, there's a weapon! Look at that! How do you pick that shit up? Oh, he hit me with a ring bell! You son of a bitch! That is probably the first wrestling game to ever have a weapon. Look at that. Oh, this is it. See if he... I got the three count and I had no life left. That was a miracle right there. there. There's actual weapons in this game. I completely forgot about that. So you see right there, we win. There's a little time limit. And then you advance on to the next. And you get, you get a, like a little trophy again. And the more you advance, the more you see like some crazy stuff. The, the ring also changes a little bit. Like right now it's probably the same, but the more you played, the, the graphics change up a little bit. This is actually one of the better wrestling games on the, uh, the NES, in my opinion. I mean, my favorite is the uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. But this is definitely uh, my second favorite. Just beat the crap out of me here. This game is definitely hard, though, so you have to know exactly what you're doing. Oh! oh. Oh, he's getting pissed off. <laughs> I forgot how to do all the moves. There's definitely more moves to do in this game besides what I'm doing. Oh, oh my god, he's doing a suplex to me. Might be able to win this match real quick. Let's see if we can get him in the ring. Get over here, you son of a bitch. Wow, he was gonna be dirty. He's gonna try to. Let's see if we can win. I got it! He was, he was about to tag, too. He didn't quite make it. So there we go, we won that match. And it gives you the time limit to get the Ricky Fighters. You see the trophy changes a little bit, it looks a little bit more fancier. Alright, so once you advance to the next round, you can see that the uh, ring looks a little different now. Like the, uh, the, they have like a little star looking thing in the ring. So you'll see little things like that, and it's pretty cool. I think this is like the only, the only wrestling game on the NES where the, uh, the graphics change up like that. You have different looking rings, things change up and they look a little slightly different. So I'm going to continue playing this. But yeah, this is Tag Team Wrestling on the NES. One of my favorite wrestling games on the NES. I remember playing this a lot when I was younger. And uh, this game is... Very, very fun if you like uh, an old school 8 bit wrestling game or WWF WrestleMania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Check that out. You have the classic WrestleMania logo right there on the top. I mean, check that out. That is fancy, nice, regal looking. You have the classic WWF logo. Now, right below the uh, WrestleMania logo on the left side, it says featuring Hulk Hogan and other WWF superstars. And of course, on the uh, the box art itself, it's probably one of my favorite box arts of all time. You have a huge portrait picture of Hulkamania himself, Hulk Hogan. Uh, superstars are wrestling. And you see the, uh, the intensity in Hulk Hogan's face as he tears his yellow Hulkamania shirt off. About ready to kick someone's ass. And uh, down below, you have the Acclaim logo. 
what a classic Google that is right there. Uh, if you're an old NES gamer, the Acclaim logo is quite popular. Check that out. Then over on the right side, you have the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System logo and the Nintendo Official Seal Quality. And check that out. That's pretty awesome. And over on the side of the box, you also have the uh, WWF WrestleMania logo, which is definitely my favorite WrestleMania logo. Check that out. That is definitely awesome. And uh, on the very bottom of the side, you have a simplified Acclaim logo. Doesn't, it actually doesn't say Acclaim. It says ACC. And over on the right side, you, you see a little uh, Nintendo logo as well. It's the very top of the box. You have a WWF WrestleMania logo. It was fantastic. Check that out. That's awesome. What a classic logo that is. And directly on the other side of the side side of the box, as you can see, there's basically the same as the other side. So it's a WrestleMania logo with the uh, simplified Acclaim logo and the uh, Nintendo logo. Now the uh, the back of the box is a bit more busy. You have the uh, WWF WrestleMania logo right there on top. And of course you have the featuring Hulk Hogan and other WWF superstars. And you can tell that they were really, really, really pushing the fact that Hulk Hogan was in the game. He was very popular at the time. So uh, the other WWF superstars that they listed on the back here, as you can see here, is Macho Man Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Honky Tonk Man, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, that is. Let me check that out. <laughs> they actually put the million with the dollar sign and man. And they have the Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, if you always dreamed of being Hulk Hogan or Randy Savage, or one of the other WWF superstars, which they don't mention. <laughs> and now, here's your chance. So they pretty much hyped the game up right here. And uh, down at the very bottom of the uh, box, you have a few screenshots of the actual game itself. And, uh, this was probably the first licensed wrestling game on the NES, as far as I know. So, uh, yeah, the reason why I own this game is because I definitely love the box art. I think the box art is pretty awesome. So right here we're going to pop in WrestleMania for the NES, and we're going to check out WrestleMania for the NES. Right here, right now, the Wrestling Week here on Memory Lane. So here we are playing a WrestleMania for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, and uh, right away we're greeted with the WrestleMania title screen, the bigger, better, badder, which was the uh, slogan that they used in 1987 for WrestleMania 3, so you can tell that this game was developed around that time. WrestleMania 3 was the baddest, best, biggest thing going at the time. It was definitely uh, 93,000 in the Pontiac Silverdome. And you got the uh, awesome looking WWF logo right there, and uh, it looks great on the NES. Let's see what we got here. All rights reserved. Copyright 1988. WrestleMania, bigger, better, better, bigger, better, 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 better. All right, let's see if we can uh, get past this point right here. It says one thing. Uh, All right, we can, this is made by Rare, by the way. Same people who made uh, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Country, that is. So, uh, there is a really, really horrible rendition of Hulk Hogan. Eventually, it does pop up on the screen. I'm not sure if it went by or not. I think it already went by, but we'll see if it comes up again. What in the hell? Maybe uh, I got the wrong game. I don't know. There is usually. Okay, let's just play it. All right, so we have uh, select number of players. All right. Oh my. Oh my God. He's beating crap. Oh man. Yeah, that's actually not a bad. Ex I was gonna say that's not a bad looking Bam Bam Bigelow, except they made him fat. Just like every other character. Look how, look how fat Ted DiBiase is. He's not that fat. Come on. 
I'm gonna punch him. Oh my god, he's beating the crap out of me. So if you hold down B, you can you uh, actually say hold down A, you run. Man, you have to really <laughs> get the heck out of his way. You can you can even see the tattoos on his head. You see that? That's actually pretty cool. And you hear it right there in the background, Strike Force theme song. It's a really really awesome theme song from back in the day. Uh, they're not even in the game, but somehow the, the music is in, in the game. That makes me wonder, were they uh, planning on adding more wrestlers? And they decided just to re release the game the way it is? Or what, what's the deal, you know? And uh, that song is Girls and Cars. I'm not a good singer. I'm not going to bother singing, but... Uh, yeah, look it up on YouTube. And the Million Dollar Man is actually doing better than uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, Randy Savage. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Bam Bam Bigelow gained some supernatural powers and punched me across the freaking ring. I'm gonna punch oh my, he punched me from behind. He actually was facing the other direction and somehow managed to punch me. What the hell is that? What's going on here? Oh, see, look at that. He backhanded me. That's cheap. Oh my god, what the hell? Get up, get up! Oh, he punched me in the face. You can actually see the impact. <laughs> you can actually see his mullet, too, on uh, Ted DiBiase. That's pretty cool. But, oh, no. Yeah, now he's beating the shit out of him. Yeah, I took that. It's fun. Win one match, damn it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's his. That's his momentum. That little fire thing. He missed it. Each wrestler has their own little momentum thing they can pick up, and I guess it gives them energy. He might have actually got it. Damn it. Bam Bam Bickle freaking got me. Oh. This game is hard. Well done, player Bam Bam Bigelow. You have beaten a million dollar man, GPE, Game, game of Blues Empire. I just got Bam Bam Bigelow beat the crap out of me. Now let's, let's see real quick if we can see that horrible rendition of Hogan. The WrestleMania logo and the uh, WWF logo looks awesome here. Let me just check that out. And we got the uh, copyright crap right here. Let's see if we can get past that. Got the uh, WrestleMania logo still. I, I think there is a Hogan rendition title screen. Where the hell is it? Bigger, better, better. Let's see uh, WrestleMania 3 Logan. Slogan. <laughs> Not sl no. Don't mind me. Um, 1988 Rare. So this is one of Rare's earlier titles is this game definitely one of the uh let me restart the game real quick let me see oh here we go acclaim presents hulk there he is the, the worst disgusting 8-bit rendition of hulk hogan ever i guess you have to hit the reset button to see it they basically tried to do exactly what was on the box art, but in 8-bit Nintendo fashion, and they uh, they butchered it. You can barely see Hulk Hogan's face. It looks disgusting. So yeah, that's WrestleMania on the uh, NES, the first WrestleMania anyways. There's probably like three WrestleMania games on the NES. It's pretty nuts. And, uh, this WrestleMania game happens to be the worst of the bunch, but with all due respect, it was the first, so... I wouldn't expect it to be any good. It was, I think it was one of the first licensed wrestling games. It was okay. And that, that's uh, giving it too much credit, I think. It was pretty bad. But the box art was awesome. I love the box art. It's definitely classic wrestling memorabilia right there. And, uh, yeah. 
That is not WrestleMania's theme song. That is the Coliseum Video theme song. So if you were a fan of watching uh, the old WWF VHSs back in the day, you probably definitely recognize that theme music right there. And, uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. What is your favorite wrestler and what do you think is going to happen at WrestleMania? And are you going to be watching the G1 special at MSG? That's an NES. That's a second model NES. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Check that out. That's my old second model NES with an Excite Bike running in the background. We have the uh, the NES controller right there, the first model, and I do also have the dog bone controllers, but I prefer to use the uh, the original. And on today's episode of Memory Lane, we're gonna be taking a look at WWF Steel Cage Challenge for the NES. Now, as you can see here on the uh, the label art the actual cartridge. It is a bit worn out. Uh, definitely uh, looks like it's been played quite a bit. This game released in 1992 and uh, yeah, it is an LJN game. It's uh, developed by Sculpture Software. And, uh, over in Europe, they also received this game in uh, 1992 as well. This game was also released on Master System and Game Gear in 93. And as you can see on the, the actual label art right here, you have Macho Man! Bret Hart, The Undertaker, The Mountie, you have uh, Pokemania right there on the bottom, you have Ted DiBiase, and you have Macho Man battling in a steel cage. So let's pop in WWF Steel Cage Challenge into our second model NES, and let's check it out. Alright, so the game does appear to be working fine. I did have to uh, blow it out a couple of times, and you see the LGN logo right there. And you have the awesome title screen, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. You have the awesome old WWF logo right there. You have Hulk Hogan, a nice NES rendition of Hulk Hogan right there on the title screen. Check that out. That is pretty awesome. And it looks like we have a little sample gameplay right here. From Venice Beach, California, weighing 303 pounds, the immortal Hulk Hogan and his opponent. We have Bret Hart coming out right here. That's going to be a very interesting match. Let's see what happens here. You have a nice little comic style entrance right there. You have, um, I think it was Earl Hedner, and you have a steel cage. Now, this is what makes this game awesome, is you can actually have steel cage matches. And yes, you can knock yourself out, just like what Hulk Hogan just did right there. <laughs> That's pretty uh, interesting. You can run literally, literally right into the cage and kill yourself. And uh, it looks like Hogan caught himself right there. You prefer oh, he did a power bomb. That's like the only finisher that's in this game, by the way, is the power bomb. And uh, I think they intentionally added that into this game because they had Sid Vicious in the game. Let's check it out. So we have your main menu right here. And uh, most Atari games, I usually record Atari games, so I'm going to start recording more stuff. But yeah, most Atari games don't have main menus. On the NES, that kind of changed things a little bit. You have a uh, player versus computer. Players versus computer. You have tag team match. You can have a uh, player versus player. Yeah, one on one. We have a uh, tag team, tag team championship, and we have the WWF Championship Tournament. Let's try one on one. We'll see what we got here. There's a few different difficulties here. And you can have a regular match or a specialty cage match. So what we'll try first is the regular match. Let's check out the roster here. We have Hulk Hogan. Definitely have the nice NES rendition of his music. And check that out. We have the Undertaker. It's a NES spooky uh, Undertaker theme song right there. Jake the Snake Roberts. Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Definitely a really awesome rendition of his music right there for the NES. Randy Macho Man Savage. Another awesome rendition. Brett the Hitman Heart. Now, back in the day, I actually owned this game. And I used to turn the game on just for the music. I actually enjoyed the 8-bit uh, the WWF theme songs. I thought it was pretty awesome. That's one of my favorite theme songs right there. 
Sounds just like the actual real thing, but 8-bit form. Sid Vicious. Now, it's kind of funny. It's, uh, the Sid Vicious, that's the only finisher they added into the game for some reason. And I believe once you lock up, you hit B and A together. And you can actually do Sid Vicious Powerbomb, no matter what wrestler it is. It's really interesting. It makes me wonder if they were actually planning on adding finishers into the game, but they kind of cut it short, and they just kept the Powerbomb in the game, and that was it. So we have Sid Vicious coming to the ring, and we have Macho Man, Randy Savage. I haven't played this game in years. Now watch. Get over here, you son of a bitch. Yeah, stumped the crap out of him. I haven't played this game in forever. There's a lot of kicking and punching. This is like the uh, primitive version of Super WrestleMania for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I'm using a uh, standard NES controller, the square rectangular shaped one, not the dog bone that came with the... Uh, the second model in the S, which uh, you have a whole kinds of crazy sound effects going on in the background. You, have, you can hear the crowd effects. They're going, woo! Bam! I got the power bomb. Now, let's see if I pin his head. Oh. <laughs> you saw that power bomb? That was pretty awesome. That was definitely my favorite move in the game. That was, that's Sid Vicious finisher right there. I mean, they actually added that into the game. That's actually pretty cool. Bam! Another power bomb. How many power bombs can Macho Man take? He is done. His his life bar is. He took a big boot right there. I mean, <laughs> I forgot how to pin. Let me see if I can figure this out. It's been I haven't played. Oh my God! He's you he knocked him out cold. Come on, pin him! Pin him! Pin him! Pin him! Oh my god. So if you... Oh! What the hell is that? If you push A and B together, you can run. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I've... It's been a while since I played this. Oh, he's beating himself up here. Pin him! How do I pin? I forgot. I don't have the manual to this game. I used to have the whole box and everything, but... Scoop body slam. Let me see if we can. Uh... Well, while I try to figure out how to pin, you can definitely take a look at the awesome graphics we have here. This is definitely a, my favorite NES wrestling game. The ring aprons actually look really, really detailed, nice. They're not like plain, ugly looking. You, you can actually see they actually, for 8 bit, for NES standards, they, had, they added a lot of detail to the ring apron. You can see like they almost look like curtains. The actual ropes, red, white, and blue, just like the real uh, WWF ring back back in the day. Did a pretty good job. And they added the uh, WWF logo right there in the center of the ring, so that was actually a nice little feature they had. Pin his ass. Oh, here we go. I guess it's down in B. <laughs> Let's go to page 13. Let me see if we can try that again. Okay, so to try to pin your opponent, you must <clears throat> press the B button and the arrow down pad simultaneously. It says, but remember, a pinfall doesn't count for your victory unless you, uh, it's a full three seconds. So it is down in B. Okay. So let's go back and see if we can uh, try that out. So you have to literally push down and B together at the same exact time. Like literally at the same time in order for that to work. So now we know how to play the game. Say so I haven't played it in years. Now we're wrestling uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage. 
And a steel cage match, holy crap. Now the uh, the actual label of the game, they have Macho Man and Ted DiBiase in a steel cage. Let's see what kind of threat he poses t towards the Undertaker here. So far the Undertaker's dominating. Oh, he powerbombed them into the steel cage. That's gotta hurt. And the, the, the pin technique doesn't really apply to this at all. This this match right here is definitely a steel cage match. Let's see what we got going on here. And just in case you guys are wondering, we're playing this through a standard coaxial connection. This is not even a AV. This is the old school little RF box that connects into the coaxial. And I have the... Uh, 2600 Junior plugged into the, uh, the NES box as well, so it bypasses. So it's uh, pretty interesting. Let's see if we can uh, knock Macho Man Randy Savage out. We gotta headbutt the crap out of him. This is the only way he's gonna get him off of me. Oh my. Oh! No way! He's spinning! Oh, I kicked out, thank God. Climb the cage. What the hell? He fell off. Oh, you have to keep holding the arrow down. Oh my god, kick him. If you let go of the direction, he actually jumps back off. So yeah, the Undertaker beat Macho Man pretty easily. We'll see who's next. So he beat Bret Hart and the Macho Man. Who could who could possibly be next? Oh wow, we're fighting the Rowdy Piper. And even the NES has a really cool rendition of his theme song. Listen to that. That sounds awesome. And this is a standard match. Every so often you have a cage match. Oh my god, he power bombs also. See? And check that out. Oh, he's... <laughs> he's pretty smart. He got outside the ring. The uh, the AI is actually pretty smart. He wants to go outside the ring. There you go. <laughs> the AI actually uh, is pretty smart in this game. It kind of reminds me of something Roddy Piper would actually do. Oh, yeah, scoop body slam. You have to hammer away at these buttons a little bit more once you get further into the tournament because these guys are a little bit more tougher. Oh my god. He body slammed me. I kicked out. In order to kick out, you have to hammer away at those buttons fast. Oh, he's going to pin me again. Holy crap. Yeah, power bomb them twice outside the ring. This guy is taking a beating. Let's see if we can uh, knock him down. He's using his second batch of health. You can see he restored his health a second time. I st I'm still on my first first health bar. Let's see if we can uh, knock him out here and. Oh no way! He's gonna try to pin me again. I kicked out. Oh. Alright. So let's try to pin. There we go. Two. Three. Yeah. I beat Roddy Piper. He put on a pretty damn tough fight, though, so I'll give him that. And good for Roddy Piper. He actually fought the Undertaker. Undertaker's burying everybody today. Okay, who's next? Who's the next victim? Jake the Snake Roberts. Okay, this is going to be a pretty good match. And that's actually pretty cool. They actually have the little snake design on the side of his uh, pants. Look at that. It actually looks just like Jake the Snake Roberts. And they even have his mustache. I mean, I must give credit where credit's due. They actually put a lot of detail on the characters. I mean, the... Kudos to whoever uh, 
was in the graphic department of this game. They did a good job for the NES. And it's also on the uh, Sega Master System. And the uh, Sega Game Carrier, which I actually recently uh, acquired the Game Carrier version of this game off eBay. I'm waiting for it to show up. I don't. I never played it before, so I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as the NES. Maybe slightly different looking. I'm not sure. We're gonna have to check that out. And he used the second batch of health already. You saw that? And that's why I think about that. You got. Power bombed outside the ring. That's such a such a vicious uh, feature in this game. Power bomb him over the top rope to the outside of the ring. That has got to be painful. That's a definitely a break some bones doing that. Yeah, look, at Jake Roberts is taking that freaking beating, man. Look at this. Is he gonna kick out? Oh, he's done. I mean, the other ticker is on the roll now. We figured out exactly how to pin. You have to push down and B simultaneously together. Now, who is the next victim of the other ticker? Hulk Hogan! Oh, God. This is going to be a hard match. And they're pretty much close to the same weight. And it's a steel cage match. Oh, God. I mean, you know, no one beats Hulk Hogan. Let's see if we can uh, beat Hulk Hogan. The immortal Hulk Hogan. Now, back in the day, The Undertaker actually did beat Hulk Hogan. What was that? Tuesday in Texas or whatever that, that pay-per-view was? Let's see if the Undertaker can make it happen again. You have to do a lot of headbutting and punching. Oh my God, he's freaking tough. He's actually. Tr oh my God. He's gonna use the second health bar soon. Oh, he threw me into the cage. This is gonna be the last match. He is. He used the second health bar. What a bastard. This is a tough match right here. So far, Hogan has not laid down. It's even hard to pull off a regular move on Hogan. Alright, let's get to the cage. Climb it, climb it. Yeah, I beat Hulk Hogan. That was a pretty big accomplishment right there. And here is your winner of the cage match, The Undertaker. Alright. And the new World Wrestling Federation champion is The Undertaker. And you have the little credits on the bottom. You have the uh, championship belt. You have a nice little trophy in the center. You have the uh, cool looking WWF logos right there on each side. A sparkling trophy. Look at that. Now that's a definitely... Uh, well awarded victory screen right there, especially if you're a wrestling fan. You have the Winged Eagle WWF title sparkling in NES fashion. Check that out. That looks beautiful. It's amazing. Look at that. You can see all the nice shininess. And uh, that is WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge on the NES. I beat the game just for the hell of it. That's how fun it is. And uh, definitely uh, one of my favorites. Uh, definitely my favorite NES wrestling game of all time. I played this game quite a bit back in the day. And as you saw, I actually forgot how to play it for a brief second. And I had to actually look at the manual. A PDF manual. I actually don't have the real manual, unfortunately. Now, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below.